Good morning, everyone, and welcome back to another Mornings with the Masters, where we devote ourselves to the Lord daily with you. We are picking back up with New Morning Mercies, and I'm just going to take it from here. It says this, It is a good question to ask yourself, one that is worth not answering too quickly. How serious are you about the sin that was the reason for the most costly sacrifice ever made? Consider God's seriousness as pictured for us in the drama in the Garden of Eden. Study the following words carefully. And I'm going to read Genesis chapter 3, verses 14 through 19. I'm going to read it pretty slow um, so that it can really take root in our heart. It says this, Then the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, you are cursed more than all animals, domestic and wild. You will crawl on your belly groveling in the dust as long as you live. And I will cause hostility between you and the woman and between your offspring and her offspring. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. Then he said to the woman, I will sharpen the pain of your pregnancy and in pain you will give birth and you will desire to control your husband, but he will rule over you. And to the man he said, Since you listened to your wife and ate from the tree whose fruit I commanded you not to eat, the ground is cursed because of you. All your life you will struggle to scratch a living from it. It will grow thorns and thistles for you, though you will eat of its grain. By the sweat of your brow you will have food to eat until you return to the ground from which you were made. For you were made from dust, and to dust you will return. God took sin so seriously that he did two things when the first transgression occurred. He immediately dealt out punishment and immediately set in motion his plan of rescue and redemption. Both demonstrate God's seriousness about what we all too easily deny or minimize. And I love how this kind of follows this whole heart posture that we're developing this year in Mourns of the Masters where it just feels like we're going deeper you know, and I'm sure one thing that you all have heard me say a thousand times so far, which is we're putting respect on God's name. And I think what comes along with that is also putting the respect due to the real danger and the reality of sin in and around us. And so when we see how serious God took sin, when you read there, you literally, you're reading about it and you're like, oh my word, like women are going to go through this now because of it. And men are going to go through this now because of it. You see the severity of it. You see how people will toil by the sweat of their brow forever now until they return to dust. And you just see this and we're like, wow, that sin that I'm struggling with isn't something I need to belittle. I don't want to minimize my sin Because I don't want to minimize what Christ did for me on the cross. And so I'm not afraid of realizing the severity of sin. Because whenever I do that, I'm also reminded of the severity of what Christ did for me. Has anyone ever done something really special for you? It could even be a small thing. It could be like, oh, wow, I can't believe you thought of me like that. It could be a call. It could be a text. Or it could be someone really bailed you out if you're maybe in financial debt or Uh, Maybe someone really was there for you after a really hard breakup where they were just in and out every day. They're checking in on you, you know, and this, you just, wow, this person did me such a great service. Thank God that this person was there for me, right? And there's this gratefulness you have towards them. Are we walking around with that, with that same gratefulness times a million towards Jesus and what he has done? We have to put some respect on the sin that separated us from God. And then we will equally put so much respect on the sacrifice that he made on our behalf. It's this crazy heart posture thing. It really is. It's a mindset thing. And so I don't want us walking around in this doom and gloom attitude, like, woe is me. I'm the worst person ever because I'm a sinner, all this stuff. No, what we're saying is, is this is how bad it actually is. I'm not going to allow the world to taint my perception or my understanding or my, tr- my, my belief of sin. But at the same time, I'm not going to let the weightiness of sin take me to a place of self-isolation, of self-loathing, of self-punishment when Christ paid the punishment for us. 
And so it takes us through this roller coaster to the cross where our hearts are being healed. Right now, even you and I, our hearts are being healed from the sin that has pierced them and made and made them corrupt in some ways. And I think that I was just talking to a friend of mine and we're talking about living life as like say a wounded king or maybe in your aspect, a wounded queen. And we have to make sure that we're pursuing healing from the things that we've experienced, maybe from the sins of others or maybe from the sins that we have committed and they've now turned back and caused us problems. And pursuing that healing looks like pursuing the father because I don't want to glaze over that scripture when God said to the serpent, right? He says right here, he shall bruise your head and you shall bruise his heel. He will strike your head and you will strike his heel. And you see literally in Genesis chapter three, you see God talking about what Jesus was going to do for us you see that Jesus was going to squash the enemy under his heel, but you did see how he was going to take punishment and how the serpent would strike his heel. And <clears throat> God was, we, he was already working on our behalf from the very beginning. Oh man, that's so special for us all. <clears throat> Sorry if this devotion was a little discombobulated, but I think we all want to feel close to God. I think we all want to feel loved by him. I think we all want to feel close to him because there's so many things in the world begging for our attention or they're trying to distract us or they're numbing us or they're desensitizing the impact of maybe sin or maybe they're desensitizing the impact of God's grace. And there's nothing more important than us sitting at the feet of Jesus. There's nothing more important for us. So let's do that. Even after this devotional, after this prayer, let's sit at his feet and remind ourselves of what Genesis chapter 3, the plan that God put in motion so early in Scripture <clears throat> when he says, and he shall bruise your head and you will bruise his heel, God said to the serpent. Jesus took the punishment that we deserved to give us the life that we don't deserve. Praise God. I'm going to pray this out. Oh Lord, help us to not minimize the sin that is in us and around us, but also help us to not minimize the victory that you have given us through Christ. Help us to find just humbled, grateful, thankful hearts in our posture underneath you. And that way we can feel the pressure of the world falling off of our shoulders because you took our yoke. You bore our pain. You paid our punishment because you love us. In your son's name we pray. Amen. Amen, y'all. Now is that perfect time to break out the worship music, break out the journal, and continue pressing to the Lord. Don't forget that you are God's masterpiece and don't forget to love you. Love you. We'll talk to you tomorrow. I'll be the same.